Okay, so my name is Rahul Prasad. Okay, I will be uh, share you a short demo lecture of mathematics. Okay, of grade eleven of the topic trigonometry. So let's begin. Yes. Okay. So the topic which we'll be reading today is trigonometric functions. Okay. Trigonometric functions. Uh, in grade 10, you must have already read about the various trigonometric topics, right? Um, height and distance. Okay. Height and distance. That was also a part of trigonometry. Okay. Height and distance. And the basic uh, trigonometric angles of, and by that I mean sine, cos, tan, and their reciprocals, which is the sine of, uh, reciprocal of sine is how much? For say, the reciprocal of cos is say, reciprocal or inverse, they mean the same thing, or the opposite of tan is what, okay? And at various angles, what will be their value? Various angles means at zero degrees, at 30 degrees, at uh, 45 degree, at 60 degree, and at 90 degrees, what will be their respective values of each of the six trigonometric functions? And some proofs and some basic things which we have discussed in grade 10 okay, of CBSC. Okay? Now, what we'll be reading here is a much, a little bit of advanced and higher concepts. Okay, So let's see. Now, before reading the concepts, let us discuss one of the very basic rules, how to identify the functions that will change. Okay. Now, for that, what we'll do, we will draw the vertical axis. Okay. This is basically my X axis. This is basically my Y, uh, sorry, this is the Y axis and this is X axis, right? Now, what we will be doing is we will, let's say we'll create a short circle. Okay. Let's say I'm creating a rough circle. Okay. Although it doesn't like to circle, okay, that's fine. So we will name them as quadrants, okay? Exactly in the same manner as we do in the graphs, okay. In quadrant geometry, we will name them as quadrants. So this will be my first quadrant, this will be my second quadrant, this will be my third, and this will be my fourth quadrant, okay. Now, each of these axes, each of these vertical axes will be, and horizontal axes will be named with an angle. How? Let's see. Let's say I am naming this as zero degrees, okay? We will always move in the anti-clockwise direction. Anti-clockwise means opposite to the direction of clock. So, after first degree, we know that we will traverse how much angle? 90 degrees here and reach this axis. So after traveling zero to 90, this will be called as 90 degrees or in trigonometric terms, we call it pi by two. After again, we will add 90 degrees here and we will reach how much? 180 degrees means exactly a straight line. And so this will be called as pi, okay? I'm talking about in radian, okay? Now, again, we will traverse 90 degrees. So we will get how much? 190 plus 80, sorry, 180 plus 90, 270. That means if we will add pi and 90, 90 means pi by two. So how much we will get? After taking the LCM, this has denominator one, LCM will be two. So this will be two pi plus pi, which is how much? 3 pi by 2. So this will be named as 3 pi by 2 or in degrees if we will say 270 degrees. Remember this pi, all this in radians and this degrees you already know. And again we will add, if we will add 90 degrees in this, what will we get? We will get 2 pi. How? Let's see. Now, 3 pi, we have here 3 pi by 2. In 3 pi by 2, we will add pi by 2. LCM, take LCM, and it will be how much? 
4 pi by 2 and simplifying this we will get how much 2 pi so this angle will be how much pi is it clear now let us discuss one more few important things related to this so that uh, okay we have to always remember that the function by function i mean the interconversion between sine and cos okay sec and cosec and tan and cot this will happen only and only along this vertical line okay vertical line and now i how it will change for example okay now before that we have to remember what is the sign convention okay because sign convention is one of the very important things in this whole topic okay which one will be plus which one will be minus all that the first quadrant we name it all all means all of these six trigonometric functions will have a positive value if they lie in the first quadrant okay that is between 0 and 90 degrees okay now in the second quadrant we call it sine sine means only two quantities will be positive that is sine and obviously if sine is positive the reverse of sine that is cosec that will also be positive after that in the third quadrant the thing which will be the trigonometric function which will be positive is tan now needless if tan is positive cot will also be positive because they are the reciprocal after that all sine tan so cos now if this cos is positive sec will also be positive because they are reciprocal obviously if one is positive, if two, sorry, so let's say if two is positive, so one over two will also be positive. Okay, sign won't change. So one of the short tricks to remember is A S T C all sine tan cos. This is very, very important thing to remember. Okay. After that, now we will see how the things will change. It just let me. Now, okay, let's say if I am talking about sine 120 degrees, for example, okay, now 120, how we can write it? Obviously, we don't know all the values, okay, it's not possible to remember, so we will derive it. How? With the help of this only. So sine. We have to see if we can write this angle in the terms of this endpoints. Either 180 plus minus something, 90 plus minus something, 0 plus minus something, or 270 plus minus something. Okay. So this 120. This 120, if we will think it, sorry. This 120, if we will think it can be written as 90 plus 30, right? Now, same way. We know 90 plus, and 90 is lying where? 90 is lying along this vertical axis. So what will happen? The sign. So what is the rule basically? It will happen like sign. 90 plus theta is equal to how much? Cos of theta means 90 plus angle, whatever will be there, that will be changed to. So it will become what? Cos theta. Here my theta is 30 degrees. So it will become cos 30, which is how much? Cos 30, if we remember, root 3 over 2. Okay. And then we can solve it later. But for now, we can 
as if we will we have got that sine of 120 is equal to cos of 30 which is equal to how much root 3 by 2 so is that clear let's take one more example Now, let's say I am talking about cos, cos one uh, fifty degrees. Now, again, we will see. Can we represent it something as along this vertical line or the endpoints? Yes. We can break this one fifty as how much? Ninety plus. Sixty, okay. Now ninety plus sixty, which is lying in which quadrant? Second quadrant. And since it is lying in the second quadrant, in second quadrant, what is positive? Only sine and cosec are positive. But here is cos. So that's why whatever value we will get, we have to put first a negative sign there. First step. Second step. It's ninety plus minus means again it is lying along this vertical line. So what will happen? We the function will change. Cos will get changed to sine. Sine gets changed to cos, so cos will also get to sine. Only the difference lies between the negatives and positives. Okay. So sine again cos ninety plus theta is equal to Minus sine of theta. Theta is how much? Five. This is theta, which is sixty degrees. Now, minus. Leave minus here. Sine sixty. Sine sixty. If you remember, is how much? Two root three over two. So my value will be how much? Minus three over. Two. Okay. In this way, we will discuss all the. Let's say important trigonometric functions, and this is one of the very most important because when we will be reading trigonometric identities, okay, these things are very very useful. Okay, and these are from exam point of view, also from competition, they ask very frequently. They ask questions from these topics. Okay, this is also very interesting topic and also scoring. Okay, thank you.